Thank you all for coming out tonight. Uh, if you want to turn your Bibles to Acts chapter 9, verse 1, that's where we'll be starting at tonight. And uh, we're for the wonderful service we had this morning, Lord. Lord, we thank you for the souls that were saved this morning, Lord. Lord we just ask that you just uh, help just uh, touch their lives, Lord. Help them to just uh, stay true to you and uh, just get into the church, Lord, and just uh, learn more about you, Lord. Lord, we just ask that you just be here with us tonight, Lord. Just be with each and every uh, man of God that stands in this pulpit tonight, Lord. Just uh, give them the words that you would have us to say, Lord. Lord, I just ask you now to take away me, Lord. Just work through me. And Lord, just uh, just bless some soul in here tonight, Lord. And all these things we pray in your name. Amen. Amen. All right. Tonight I want to um, preach a message entitled, Will You Give Your Life? And uh, this question may catch some of you off guard, but once we discuss it tonight... I think you will understand. I want to discuss surrendering your life in three different ways. And I'm going to talk specifically about Saul, who is later known as Paul, and on how his journey on the road to Damascus changed his life greatly. Acts chapter 9, verse 1. And Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against, his, against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest and desired of him letters to Damascus, to the synagogues, that if he found any of this way whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound into Jerusalem. Now, Ken's put up a map of uh, Saul's journey to Damascus from Jerusalem. And as you can see, that was a pretty, pretty long journey that he went on. And um, his main goal for this journey was, as we read in the first two verses, was to persecute Christians. And uh, you may ask, why would the Jews in Jerusalem want to go so far away from Damascus just to persecute Christians. And um, I've got several possibilities. One, to seize the Christians who had fled. Uh, two, to prevent the spread of Christianity to other major cities. Uh, to keep the Christians from causing any trouble with Rome. To advance Saul's career and build his reputation as a true Pharisee, zealous for the law. And to unify the fact factions of Judaism by giving them a common enemy. Saul, later known as Paul, was a very religious individual, but unfortunately there's a key word here that caused him a major problem and even causes many so-called Christians today that very problem. That key word is religion. We need to not have religion, but instead we need to have a relationship with Christ. Which leads me to my first point, which is the most important step any Christian must sincerely and honestly do. And that's like Brother Julia spoke on, apply the blood, which is surrender to salvation. Here's where Saul's journey turned into a trip that he would never regret. Acts chapter 9, verse 3. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul. Why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the bricks. In these verses, we see that Saul met the very individual that he was striving so hard to fight against. But instead, the Lord met him and stopped him in his very tracks. And right there on the road to Damascus to murder Christians, Saul accepted the Lord as his Savior. Sometimes the Lord works in very mysterious ways, but his plan is always perfect and is always on time. Never let anyone tell you that just because they didn't witness you becoming saved, that it isn't true. Because here we see that Saul was completely alone with the Lord. There is only one way to Christ, and that is whatever way the Lord himself touches your heart. Saul thought he was pursuing heretics, but soon realized he was persecuting Jesus himself. After Saul surrendered to salvation, we see next that he then chose to surrender to statutes. And statutes are simply commandments from Christ. Second point is surrender to statutes in verse 6. And he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must, must do. This verse here is a very simple question, but it's also a very strong question. Lord, what will thou have me to do? If only us as Christians could ask this question and actually stick to it. 
And we can, as long as we stick close to Christ in our daily walk. Once we surrender our lives to salvation, then we will surrender to Christ's statutes. And then we will surrender to service, which is my third point. Now here I'm going to paraphrase a few verses to save some time and to get to my last point of service. But if you'd like to read the rest of the story, it's continued from uh, verses 7 through 14 in chapter 9 of Acts. Uh, Saul was traveling with other men to Damascus, but when the Lord came to Saul, the others heard the voice, but didn't see Christ as Saul did. And after seeing Christ in a vision, Saul became temporarily blind and had to be led into Damascus, where he stayed for three days without vision, food, or drink. And while all this was happening with Saul, the Lord was speaking to another man of the name of Ananias. The Lord told Ananias where to go to find Saul. And when he realized who the Lord was telling him to go find, he tried to tell the Lord that it wasn't such a great idea because of all the horrible things Saul had done. And honestly, I can't blame him. To to hear that I'm supposed to go and talk to someone that persecutes people like me, I I would be kind of scared to do it myself. But later on we'll see that he chose to follow Christ. He says, not him, Lord. That's impossible. He can never become a Christian, in essence. And uh, that's what he said when uh, God told him of Saul's conversation in a roundabout way. Despite these understandable feelings, Ananias obeyed God and ministered to Saul. We as Christians must not limit God because he can do anything. We must obey and follow God's leading even when he leads us to difficult people and to difficult places. Verse uh, 15. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me, to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. Faith in Christ brings great blessings, but often great suffering too. Paul would suffer for his faith. And here we see that God calls us to commitment, not to comfort. He promises to be with us through suffering and hardship, not to spare us from them. Verse 17. And Ananias went his way and entered into the house, and putting his hands on him, said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus that appeared unto thee in the way as thou camest, hath sent me, that thou mightest receive the sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. There's the Holy Ghost that you like instead of the Spirit. (laughs) Ananias found Saul as he had been instructed, and greeted him as Brother Saul. Ananias feared this meeting because Saul had come to Damascus to capture the believers and take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. But in obedience to the Holy Spirit, Ananias greeted Saul lovingly. It is not always easy to show love to others, especially when we are afraid of them or doubt their motives. Nevertheless, we must follow Jesus' command and Ananias' example, showing love loving acceptance to other believers. Verse 18. And immediately there fell from his eyes as it had been scales, and he received sight forthwith, and arose, and was baptized. And when he had received meat, he was strengthened. Then Saul certain days with the disciples, which were at Damascus. And straightway he preached Christ in the synagogues, that he and the Son of God, but all them that heard him was amazed and said, Is not this he that destroyeth them which called on this name in Jerusalem and came hither for that intent that he might bring them bound unto their chief priest? Saul's arguments were powerful because he was a brilliant scholar. But what was more convincing was his changed life. People knew that what he taught was real because they could see the evidence in the way he lived. It is important to know what the Bible teaches and how to defend the faith. But your words should be backed up with a changed life. Because of Saul surrendering his life first to salvation, then secondly surrendering to the Lord's statutes, Saul had a firm foundation to surrender to service. Only through Christ was Saul able to show this true conversion, which allowed believers to follow and listen to Saul. The same principles of surrendering apply to us as Christians today. We must first surrender to salvation, then we must surrender to the statutes, or simply what Christ commands of us, and then finally we must surrender to serve. 
And if we do these things, Christ has promised to bless us. Romans 6.23b, the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Thank you. That's all I have.